today I want to tell you about a little thing. Just a little thing. Uh, and my exhortation today is attempt little things for God. And uh, I want to go through a quote for this. This is a famous quote from Hudson Taylor. If you don't know Hudson Taylor, uh, even from the series which pastor is sending on missionaries, you better go and find out amazing story of a man. But I'll come to that. But this quote goes like this. A little thing is just a little thing. But a little thing is a great thing for God. Not a, not a great thing for you, not a great thing for me. But God is greatly glorified by the little things you do. Hudson Taylor uh, was a British missionary who went to China. Now today going to China is easy, uh, but it was 1853. His first journey took six months to reach just China from, uh, from uh, UK. He was a medical person and uh, after six months of toiling in the seas and reaching China, he found uh, China had a civil war. And then uh, for 54 years, he served in China. And next to Apostle Paul, there has not been one individual in this past 2000 years who has reached out a geographical region as big as uh, what Apostle Paul did. So that was Hudson Taylor. So Hudson Taylor did only little things. He set out, he was a medical person, he, at a young age, he set out on a little thing and God was glorified. So I am um, telling the story because this is, uh, you all heard, we are standing on the verge of a new year. And like me, my wife, we all look back at this year. Many of us do look back at this year and say, I didn't do much, right? We go into a guilt uh, trip. We feel depressed, we feel dejected because we look back upon this 2023 and say, I didn't do much, I didn't achieve much. But I want to give you good news today because you have done little things somewhere here and there. God doesn't mind those little things, big things, He values them all alike. So He is greatly glorified even through the little things you have done. And now, for those who take big, big decisions on the new year, big resolutions, that's also good news. If you can do big things, uh, well and good, that's a good thing. But if you can't do, if you're not capable, if you fail, as you stand at the verge of a new year, attempt little things to God. And Hudson Taylor said, God is greatly glorified by the little things you do. And uh, so, uh, we will go through God's word to uh, clarify this little thing business. So I don't know if you know of a character who is in the Bible who is not so well known. No big stories. Uh, you've heard of Baruch? Yeah, Baruch is just in four chapters of the Bible. Um, and all he did was uh, he did little things. So we will just look at Baruch, uh, it is in Jeremiah 32, 36, 43 and 45. And his job was a scribe. You don't know what a scribe is. Those are the people who used to write in those days. Those days there was no delete button, no writing. So God's word was transmitted by scribes, right? Written down in palmyra leaves or goat skins. And there were rules, they were respected uh, professionals of those days. Uh, you cannot make a mistake. A scribe cannot write a mistake. So he has to be so accurate and his material has to be so precise that it would stand for centuries. And then this part, uh, this, this scroll is um, uh, treated and hidden and that's how we have the Bible. So this man was just a scribe. A scribe and also a secretary. Uh, in today's world as secretary. He was the right-hand man of uh, Jeremiah. Everybody has heard of Jeremiah because he is the weeping prophet. He is amazingly, his stories are amazing in the Bible. But Baruch, 
was his right hand man and uh, if you know robinson crusoe story robinson crusoe had a right hand man he was his assistant his name is friday he he was a slave he was caught and he became his right hand man and his name was friday he is popularly known as man friday so even robinson crusoe had a man friday like that jeremiah's right hand man was this baruch so we go to the first thing and uh, the before that jeremiah had 40 years of ministry and he served under five the final five kings of judah before they were captured and went to uh, exile uh, josiah the last righteous king jehoahaz jehoiakim jehoiachin and then zedekiah so he had an amazing 40 year ministry uh, what was he doing he was just warning the israelites the doom is coming disaster is coming babylonians are going to capture you and he had just doom stock and that so he has served for 40 years under uh, 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 under five dif- different kings and uh, the issue was jeremiah was trying to convey to the king of judah and these five kings look you are going to be killed babylonians are going to come but that's not what the, the king wanted to hear so what did they do they persecuted jeremiah they persecuted not only jeremiah his assistant also baruch so baruch is a story there and uh, so we just take these these are not in chronological order if you have not read these stories of baruch go and read it amazing story it's it's, it's a nice story to read and jeremiah 32 7 to 16 out of the blue comes a story and it it doesn't fit in to the normal way of things so uh, i won't read it uh, uh, for go and read it it is uh, jeremiah 32 7 to 16 it it says jeremiah is going to buy a plot of land you know just imagine in the bible what what this prophet he's going to buy a plot of land and he tells his baruch his assistant his right hand man his man friday he says go write it you know what those days they had property deeds today also we have property deeds right he says go and write the legal property deed of uh, of uh, this plot so there ends the story mysterious story out of the way it came and uh, but there is a lesson to it jeremiah was trying to convey that look doom is coming babylonians are coming but a day is going to come when life will come back to the land normal life would come back so so that was a message of hope and then we come to uh, jeremiah 36 there are a number of verses so uh, i will not read it i will just tell you the story so that you know the story and go and read it uh, it it will fascinate you for a man uh, verse 1 to 4 the lord talks to jeremiah and jeremiah tells baruch write down everything on a scroll he is his assistant he says you write it down on a scroll and uh, everything which i t- tell you all the warnings these are all not great things but warning things for judah uh, jeremiah 5 uh, 36 5 to 10 jeremiah he s- tells he gives baruch a job he tells them look i can't go into the temple because he was he was in the bad books so he says you go and read the scroll in the light uh, in in the midst of the people so he gives a job and he tells his assistant imagine if you are in in baruch's place you would be scared to do it here here's persecution and he says go and read it publicly the scroll and uh, he does it and 11 to 15 surprisingly the people in the temple got scared got scared and went and told their leaders this is verse 11 to 15 and the verse 16 says the leaders also got scared and said they will go and tell the king so jehoiakim is the king and verse 19 says the leaders told jeremiah and, and baruch look we are going to tell the king but you better go and hide so go and hide somewhere where you will not be found so that you can be safe and verse 20 to 25 says so they went these leaders went and told the king and the king started reading the scrolls and of course the king wouldn't like it right you are going to be killed that's what it, the scroll is saying so what he did he took and cut out one by one the scrolls 
and then it says it was winter like here now it's winter time right there was a fire place there was a fire of all those days there was a fire so he put the each scroll into the fire and he burned the whole scroll feeling sad right uh, uh, but it also says the leaders who went and told the king they were not scared that's also amazing the leaders would have normally got, got their heads stopped but they were not scared something god was working mysteriously behind the scenes and the king tells in verse 26 to go and see baruch and jeremiah but god hid them and verse 27 to 28 jeremiah tells baruch it's gone one scroll is gone doesn't matter write another one i'll tell you and out of god amazingly puts the thoughts into his mind and he writes the second scroll and it, the word of god says he added words into it and uh, so there is something here into it see the king can burn your scroll but god's word doesn't get burned this is a lesson today you can burn god's word but god will prevail his words will prevail so uh, jeremiah 43 1 to 3 uh, is another story baruch again comes on scene and this time the 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 leaders of the king come to baruch and say look who told you to write all this he said you are saying god told me to write so he said god didn't tell you to write it's you baruch who is instigating the king baruch heard it uh, what can baruch do so baruch is also a human being jeremiah also also a human being they got scared they ran to egypt and history says they died in egypt but uh, the last of it is an amazing um, uh, ending of this baruch story jeremiah 40 5 1 5 this chapter is not at all about jeremiah it tells about the man baruch imagine god's word has got a little known man called baruch who appears only here and his whole chapter about him and god tells him some specific things that jeremiah told baruch to do so it's like you tell about this church put it on the website and uh, write the big things of this church this church has this this church is that and then it explains about the usher standing at the door today uh, unfortunately fortunately pastor alone was the usher today but just imagine you write the hop story and it tells about the usher it's like that here jeremiah 45 is about a man who did small things little things and it tells him some jeremiah is giving baruch some lessons and these are lessons for us also so i'll read it jeremiah tells baruch don't seek great things for yourself in effect in today's world if i would paraphrase it i would say it is matthew 6:33 and it's a lesson for you and for me seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you you know that's that's what Bar- baruch was being told don't think don't try to be too ambitious for yourself be faithful in the little things you do and then he assures him you will be spared you will be spared the disaster means the doom which is coming to juda and and baruch and jeremiah escaped the doom but they went and died in egypt uh, so and he saying be happy with the deliverance which is promised so be faithful it's the same thing for us there is going to be tough days coming then the christ coming is so near there are going to be tough times but god's word says those who trust in him will be spared so it's it's the same message so what what's the lessons baruch did little things but god did great things 
that we have today. Uh, the whole book of Jeremiah, the whole book of Lamentations and First and Second Kings. Because one man, an insignificant man, was faithful in the little things of God. So then the second lesson is things are not going to be rosy, okay? There is going to be, Baruch was told, you are going to suffer for this. But keep going. And it's the same thing, I, I can assure you. The next year, we wish it's a great year. But there could be challenges on the way. So, what do we do? Keep going. Baruch was told to keep going. And then, finally, my exhortation is, don't be a Lone Ranger Christian. I don't know if you know this term. Lone Ranger Christian means one who works in isolation. You don't think you can do it yourself. You can't do it yourself. You need to work with others. Christian ministry is working with others. And every Christian ministry is working with somebody else. Not necessarily people who are like-minded, who are the same uh, characteristics as you, but you got to do it together. Jeremiah had a Baruch, Paul had a Timothy. You and I have so many other people. So don't be a, a, range, a, a lone, lone ranger Christian. So this past year, if it was a thing you look back and uh, see you didn't do great things, that's okay. You have done little things, God is going to do amazing things to, by those things. You might not see it. You might not even see it today's world. Maybe after three generations, uh, you will come to know that. So, uh, if you can do big things, do it. So, attempt great things. And uh, when I say little things, I don't know how to explain little things. But I was telling pastor, I heard him. I don't know whether he'll do it. He said he's going to give us all a calendar. And uh, he said this time the calendar is going to be different. So, I don't know if it is going to come or not. But he says there's going to be a verse in the Bible, a verse to read. And this is something I do. I, I follow a Bible reading calendar, uh, which allows you to read a passage of God's Word in the morning and in the evening. And in, after 365 days, you would have covered the Bible. You would have read the whole Bible. So it's a great thing. It's a little thing, but it's not an easy thing. Day 1, January 1, with all the enthusiasm, you'll stand up. Genesis 1, you'll read in the morning. Great. Great story. But Matthew 1, you'll read in the evening genealogy. Boring thing. But it's okay. It's the little things are not easy. Uh, not, uh, not easy, not difficult, I would say. So, uh, do something little in the new year. And if you have done little things in the past year, that's where God, God will be greatly honored. So, I'll repeat Hudson Taylor's uh, quote once again. A little thing is just a little thing. But a little thing is a great thing for God. Not a great thing for you, not a great thing for me, but God is greatly glorified by the little things to do for Him. Amen. In the Gata is on the Sham, third chair to the Nangal Ganagaro Mardunal Vishosikino. Or Bachan Nangal, Idurim, E channel, subscribe with Langal, Daiwai, Ipatane, on the subscribe area, E Sam Nasham, Matija Kudi, on the forward is Uduk, Nangal Kidanagaro Mardangal, third chair to Adamatlorkum, or Anagaro Mai Tiruan, other Karna Mai Tiru. God bless you.